everyone. Uh, here, Masara, Florencia, and Hugo, uh, all from different places. And uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the conference and give you a break from the uh, challenges you've been trying to solve. First, it's nice to see the community alive, and hopefully next year we're all together and vibrating and marche bon secours. But for now, let's enjoy our screen and uh, flow the energy through it. So, uh, Flo and Hugo, can you tell us about your experience at uh, like building such a good conference online? Sure. Um, so How is I think, it? I, I mean, it's it's been like it, it was really fun. I think it was a really fun event. Um, it's uh, it's definitely very different from organizing a conference in person, where a lot of the experience of organizing it involves physically running back and forth, <laughs> like literally running from one end of a venue to another over and over again. Um, it, this, this time it's a lot of emailing and, and, you know, a lot of being very nervous about streams. Uh, I think, uh, I think we were able to create something, uh, you know, a little bit unique, um, and have some really interesting conversations. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, I think it's weirdly far more nerve wracking to do a conference online because you don't, you don't see necessarily what's going wrong. Uh, when you're doing a conference physically, you know, you know if the person is physically there, you see them, <laughs> you know where they are, you tell them they're in the wrong room and they should go to the other room. Um, whereas online, there's a lot of just, just hoping that you've sent the right email, that you've chatted with the right person, that you haven't accidentally sent an email to uh, GitHub notifications instead of an actual human, which is a thing that happened. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You go, it's kind of your, your first time really being deeply involved in the conference. So I'm curious about your, your very uh, uh, just, I guess, different experience uh, or, or the fact that your experience is specifically with the online conference as opposed to the physical one on the organizing side. I, I can't hear you. Uh oh. <laughs> I can't hear him either. You can't? No. Uh oh. Nope. Uh -oh. <laughs> <That's the laugh>. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I mean. All right. We'll we'll just we'll just improvise. This is this is what we do. I was wondering, like, what was the best thing about the fact that it was online? Because we often talk about how difficult it is online and how we all have Zoom fatigue. But if you had like two things to say that was the best because it was online or the benefits of it, what would it be? I think it was, I mean, definitely less physical exhaustion. Ooh, this looks fun. Uh, I think we're in a weird split screen. I love it. Um, very creative. <laughs> so I, I think, well, on, the, on just the logistics side, it is a lot less physically exhausting of an experience. And, the, but the main, I think, really really big thing is that we're able to get speakers from all over the place we do for for the for the person in-person conference we do fly speakers in um but we're limited in our budget right you know if we have a lot of really good speakers that apply who live in australia india united arab emirates like that's really really expensive and we are definitely budget constrained so sometimes we have to make some hard choices on budget um Whereas here, it's, you know, anyone can connect, anyone can give a talk. And so we were able to have a lot of really great speakers that were coming in from outside of Montreal and outside of North America. And that was just not, not at all a concern or a constraint, except when it came to actually building the schedule. And then that was really, that, that was really funny because, you know, we had someone, we had Pedro, for example, who was uh, somewhere in Asia, he was like, I think 11 hours ahead. And then we had, you know, we had people in Europe, we had people on the West Coast, we had, it, it was just the putting together the schedule was a bit of a challenge for sure. Interesting. Can we hear you? Hello, hello. Tess? Hey. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just heard uh, what Florencia her, uh, just said, and I really agree. I think time zones were definitely, uh, a challenge, uh, something that we're like, okay, so everything is gonna go, uh, gonna go smoothly, and then pe uh, people were 
replying emails like, uh, well, this is too late for me. Can you swap uh, the schedule for this? And with the blocks, that meant like not only swapping their talks, but swapping the whole block. And I think Florencia did a really good job of of really uh, <laughs> making it all happen because uh, some people really uh, wanted to to be at a certain time and and stuff like that. Uh, and some some people like Francia said uh, really compromised. Uh, Pedro is one good example. I think Reina also is a really good example. She uh, was moderating a Q and A, and I think it was just, uh, midnight for her. And she looked like uh, it was like right in the afternoon. She was really, really great. So yeah, I think it uh, work, uh, it worked well in the end. But yeah, some some people had to make some uh, really big efforts. For you sure. have kind of behind the scenes anecdotes that you haven't said to anyone, or that it'd be funny to tell. <laughs> you want to talk about the rabbit? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I think we have a few. Um, yeah, I think uh, rendezvous is one of the uh, of the uh, running gag in the in the in the conference. I think we had a, a bit of problems with the with the platform. Some speakers really had a, a tough time with the uh, in browser encoding and rendezvous and and yeah. But uh, I think uh, that went great. Uh, we had so we we started to call them squirrel moments. So every time the the stream crashed, uh, we had a squirrel showing up. And uh, yeah, so uh, we were counting the number of squirrel appearances and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I think we made a we made a mistake in assuming that we would be able to transition from uh, one speaker to the other very quickly because essentially we had only five minute breaks, and as a result, if we ran behind, everything ran behind. Um, but I think actually. <laughs> One thing that was funny was uh, one of the, the kind of bets that, that we made early on was that having these discussion panels would mean that we had some unique, spontaneous content. Uh, and we really wanted to stay away from having a conference entirely pre recorded and, and even if it was making things harder for ourselves. Uh, so, and, and the other thing that we kind of bet on with the panels was that the speakers would enjoy it and it would be fun for them to participate. Uh, and I think that that was true. Um, and we, sometimes we had, you know, we ended the panel and the speakers just continued talking yeah. to each other. And we were a little bit like, okay, we need to continue. Um, so that was funny. I mean, it's funny because it's, it's good, but just, you know, creates a little bit of, uh, uh, discomfort on the logistics side, um, and results in, in funny rabbits, uh, being on this, on the stream. <laughs> And then just as a last question, I'd be wondering, what's your main wish for next year? Apart from being on site, <laughs> probably. Yeah, that, that, that's too easy. Um, what would you like want to have or see different? I go, I'm curious what you think. Uh, I have some thoughts, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe you have really different ones, and that would be very interesting. I think... Uh, it's, uh, I really like that we could bring people from all over the world to speak and relatively easily because it was online. Uh, I wish that this will continue. So we'll be able to reach out to people that would be really a, a nice fit for NordSec and bring them to Montreal. I think uh, it'd be, it'd be really nice uh, to hear them live and, and stuff like that and not be limited by uh, for example, the, the people who, who can come. So yeah, I think uh, really encouraging uh, people from all over the world to uh, participate in the CFP and having some really uh, people that we know less uh, and we know less about or are, are bigger in sort of certain uh, other countries that we that we speak less uh, to is would be really nice. Yeah, I completely agree. Um... I also, so we had this dream um, in 2020 that we were going to do uh, a community room, and I really would like us to do that. Uh, we have the, sp the venue for it. it. It would be amazing mm -hmm. to be able to provide a space where people can, you know, build stuff and maybe participate in small challenges and just be very hands-on in a structured form. Um, 
I think that would be so cool. Uh, and, and it gives us a lot of space to do things around the badge and people modding the badge and, and whatever. Um, so I really want that to happen. Um, I think, yeah, it, it's really interesting to think, you know, if we just rewind and we skip 2020, 2021, which obviously changed things, uh, it, it th that was sort of where we wanted to scale to because I think, I, I don't know, it doesn't go necessarily with the vibe of North Star to end up having like, a gigantic amount of parallel talk tracks. So there's sort of thinking around how, what are the ways that we integrate the whole thing more and have the conference merge more seamlessly into the CTF and with the badge and with all these other things. And, and the community room, I think, is, is hopefully it. Um, and yeah, I, I guess maybe we will still stream next year. It, could, it will be a, I don't know, it's, it's something we've got to talk about, but I think it could be cool to you know, have an in-person conference, but also be streaming it now that we have that experience. Mm. We'll see. Um, I think if, if we've gained some people, uh, you know, some, some community members internationally, I guess, it would be great to keep them. Um, and sometimes, you know, people can't necessarily travel. So it'd be good to have that be also uh, an option for remote participation in a sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Community room, international speakers, all together at Bosacor. Uh, guys, we're we'll gonna let you go and hack again, but keep Nordsec in your heart. It's coming back in person soon, hopefully. And uh, have a great weekend. Thank you so much. You too. <laughs>